Hi boys and girls. Today we're going to talk all about a really interesting creature called a cicada. Are you ready? Let's go. Hi boys and girls. Today we're talking all about a really cool insect called a cicada. They're very unique and springtime is a great time to talk about them. But before we do, let's sing our welcome song. And before we sing our welcome song, we always take a big, deep breath. So please take a deep breath with me. Thank you. Hello, preschool friends, how are you? Good, good. Hello, preschool friends, how are you? Good, good. It is time to start our day. We are here to learn and play. Hello, preschool friends, how are you? Good, good. Now, there's a reason that I'm talking about cicadas right now. And that's because this spring, in a whole bunch of states in the USA, a brood or a group of cicadas called brood X will be emerging from the ground and flying around and making a lot of noise. Now this brood comes out every 17 years. That's right, since before you were born, these little cicada nymphs have been under the ground eating and getting ready to come out. And everybody's really excited about it. Um, other broods or groups of cicadas sleep and eat under the ground for seven years or 12 years, but this group is special because they've been under there for the last 17 years. When they come out of the ground, a few things are going to happen. First, they are going to come out of their exoskeleton, which is like an outside layer or armor. And they'll leave that exoskeleton attached to a branch, a tree, or you might find them on the ground. And then the grown-up cicada will fly around and look for another cicada to help them make more cicada eggs. And when new nymphs hatch out of those eggs, they'll crawl into the ground and bury themselves in there and eat for 17 years for their turn to come back out. And the grown-up cicadas will live for about a month. Now, you will definitely hear those cicadas if you live in one of the states that have them because they sound kind of weird. Some kids even say they sound like aliens. Now, I want to read you a really fun book called Cecily Cicada by Kita Helmetag Murdoch and Patsy Helmetag. In her dreary earthen hole neath the sassafras tree, on Huda Coper Street in Washington, D.C., lived a hopeful nymph cicada waiting for the time she could crawl up top and feel the sunshine. See, she's under the tree. The last thing she remembered before digging her hole was her solemn mama saying, Cecily, be bold, be patient, dear, and persevere, and never do give up, for in 17 years you'll get back to the top. In 17 years, you'll know what to do, and something amazing will happen to you. For 17 years, she waited day and night for time and temperature to be just right. Cecily ate roots, then ate some more, but eating roots was such a bore. So she was stalwart and passed the time doing 17 things that don't fit in this rhyme. So. On all these pictures, she's doing different things. Listening, knitting, dancing, drawing, doing headstands, juggling, eating root spaghetti, cooking, making faces, prospecting, reading, singing, doing yoga, whistling, throwing a pot, throwing a fit, and sleeping. Now, some of these things real cicadas don't do, but it's fun to pretend that they might do that. For a while, she waited that far off day. She had to be clever and learn to play and entertain herself till the soil felt right. At 64 degrees, she could crawl up to the light. Once when thinking of things to do, a friendly worm came passing through. He asked, why are you waiting down in this hole? She said, 
That is something I cannot control. In fact, I wish I could go up with you, but I must wait. My waiting's not through. In 17 years will come the day when I can go outside and play. One morning in May, she woke with a start. This was the moment she knew in her heart. Somehow she knew she must get to the top. She began digging and digging and did not stop. Her head popped out in the dim moonlight, but her climbing continued that starry night. After so many years, she felt so free. She climbed up the bark of the sassafras tree. When she got near the top, she suddenly froze. She felt stiff from her nose to her toes. She couldn't move. She was stuck in one spot. She tried to crawl and found she could not. She wiggled and wriggled with all her might, but no matter what, her feet held tight. She thought, I have to get out of here. Her body trembled with outright fear. She began to shake. She couldn't stop shaking when all of a sudden she heard something breaking. She heard a rip and then a crack and felt the night air on her back. She tried moving her feet and found they would, then took a step and found she could. But why had she been stuck in one place? She looked up and saw the dried brown case. Her new self was pale with wings that were green. Her skin was translucent with a beautiful sheen. When the sun came up on the beings who sleep in, Cecily's color began to deepen. Suddenly a question entered her mind. How can I leave part of me behind? That withered brown case used to be me, but now it's dried up and stuck to the tree. She saw from her branch a most curious thing, a creature like she was with elegant wings. You look puzzled, but look around. There are hundreds of us crawling out of the ground, climbing up trees and leaving our past, spreading our wings to embrace life at last. We're leaving our old selves stuck on the trees while we fly with the ladybugs, robins, and bees. Oh, it's a wonderful thing to fly. Jump off that branch. Give it a try. It was amazing. Her mom had been right, as, as, as Cecily found on her very first flight. You know how it is if you've had long to wait when that, fine, that, when that thing finally happens, isn't it great? If you've been in a dark hole, nothing is duller. Imagine emerging, surrounded by color. Below her were flowers and beautiful plants, birds and dragonflies, spiders and ants. Children were, children were playing in Glover Park and parents were dragging them home before dark. For two days, her red eyes took in all the sights and the sounds and the smells of springtime delights. There were savory flowers that smelled so sweet and tasty new leaves for her to eat. Then after three days came a glorious sound from the bushes and treetops and all around. From male cicadas both high and low, a chorus of voices began to grow. For some humans, it might sound like a buzz, but Cecily knew just what it was. A beautiful, joyful, thankful song of creatures who lived in the ground for so long. Then she heard the sweetest voice, one that made her heart rejoice. Cecily looked up and to her surprise was another cicada with stars in his eyes. When you see a cicada, please give her a smile because you may not see one again for a while. Just look at the grown up who's reading to you. When the cicadas come back, you'll be grown up too. Isn't that fun? I love that book. I wanna thank the authors for letting me read it to you today. Now I wanna show you a couple of things that you can do at home when you're observing cicadas. Now, if you're lucky enough to see cicadas, there are few things that you can do to enjoy them. The first one is just observation. When you observe something, you use all your senses to get to know something a little bit better. So if you see one, if you have a magnifying glass, you can look at it really closely. You can ask a, a grown-up if you're allowed to touch the casing and hold it in your hand. I guess you could smell it too if you wanted to. Um, so that's one thing. You could observe it and you can draw what you've observed. 
Another thing you can do is to make a sculpture of a cicada. I have here on this stick a Play-Doh cicada that I made. I have yellow Play-Doh because that, that's what I had on hand. It fell off. Um, I put some googly eyes on it and some paper wings, but you can use whatever you have in your house. You can use beads for eyes or small buttons. You can use sticks from outside as the legs, whatever you want. Just make yourself a little cicada and have some fun doing it. Another thing that you can do is count the exoskeletons that you see. Now, if you have a clipboard, then grab a clipboard and put a piece of paper in there and you can make what's called a tally mark to keep track of them. A tally mark looks just like this, a small line. But the cool thing about tally marks is that when you get to number five, you change it. So if I saw five cicada exoskeletons, I would do this. One, two, three, four, five. That fifth one swipes right across. And when you get older, when you can count by fives, then it helps you keep track of how many cicadas that you've found. Because if you have, if you find like a hundred of them, you can count by fives, five, 10, 15, 20. But if you're not ready to count by fives, that's okay, you'll learn very soon. So you can count the cicadas and keep tally marks. You can observe them and you can make art that looks just like cicadas. There's so many things that you can do. And if you have any questions about cicadas, ask a grown-up to look some information up for you because usually they can look it up on the internet and find some great facts for you to learn about cicadas. And always keep asking questions because that's how you learn. Thank you so much, friends, for being here with me and reading the wonderful book, Cecily Cicada, and learning all about cicadas because I, I think they're so cool. So I wanna thank you, and now it's time to sing our goodbye song. I have Tucker right behind me. Hi, Tucker. Bye, bye, see you again. Hope to see you soon. Bye, bye, see you again. Hope to see you soon. Goodbye, friends. See you next time. Hey, Tucker, did you know that if you hit that subscribe button, you will never miss an episode of 10 Minute Preschool? That's right. So you hit that subscribe button right now and you will see all the newest episodes right when they come out. See you next time.